a busy workshop, and this is all part of ACT. Where are we in the, in the cycle of ACT? Well, ACT, as you know, is a common territory. It's the name of the network of organisations based in South Essex, across this region, but also those French organisations with which we partnered since 2012. So this has been like an arc. We've had three years of activity, and we're coming now to the final phase of ACT, and we're particularly focusing on a project um, called the Noah's Flood project. Noah's Flood is an opera written by Benjamin Britten. So here in Thurrock, we're really focusing on developing the scenic aspects and the costume aspects for what will be a very fascinating, diverse community production. Why did they choose that particular work like that? Um, there was a number of reasons. Um, the orchestras uh, in France who've been involved in this network have wanted to innovate throughout this partnership. Um, they've realised that um, a lot of their repertoire tends to be classical orchestral repertoire, but by joining this partnership they've realised they've got access to young people, to the Royal Opera House, to our artists, to our designers and practitioners. They've got a chance to do something different and new. Um, Benjamin Britten's piece, Nose Flood, is a community-based piece. So it has a lot of participation in it from the audience, uh, but it also has amateurs playing alongside professionals on stage and in the orchestra arrangement as well. So they saw that as an opportunity to do something new for their orchestra, but something that could engage a much wider community. So we were up for joining in with that. And, and behind you, very busy making the headdresses. Is that a conscious decision to get, again, volunteers, some people who we've seen in part community chorus, whoever, and, and, and young students as well, to get them involved in this process? Very much so. I think for Royal Opera House Learning and Participation Department, whenever we put on an activity, be it a show, an exhibition, a performance, um, we want to unlock as many possibilities as possible for people to get involved and to have a good time with it, to learn with us together, to create and produce with us together. So when we found out that we would be doing the Noah's Flood production, we knew that we would have a wonderful first-class French orchestra who would be performing there. We knew that we would have not only venues in France, uh, professional venues in France, but also community venues in Cambridge that we could use. So we knew that we would have a really, really professional process. So our opportunity was then to say, what can we do with design? How can we take our component of this project and then get as many people involved as possible? So. We agreed that we would prov provide designs and templates for all of the headdresses for the animals that appear in the, in the opera. And there are 55 different species of animals that need to be represented in this piece. And paired uh, animals need to so say male and female need to be produced for the procession into the ark. And these characters are played by young people. So we've got participation through singing and performance, and that's young people from within the region. So schools in Cambridgeshire, who are another partner providing young people, but also French students are providing young people to sing and be on stage in this production. But our job has been to work with local young people to actually create some really innovative headdresses that can be worn by that many people in quite a confined stage space. So we've had to think carefully about the dimensions of the headdresses, but to design something that's going to work on stage for the piece. Lucy, just to the right of you, a, a sea of headdresses. Um, how did you get involved in this process? In fact, what is this process? This process um, is not unfamiliar to me. I've worked for the Royal Opera House for about seven or eight years. And um, when I heard that headdresses needed making, I thought, actually, I've done something similar before with children in schools um, and adults. And I thought this would be the project that I could actually make a real impact on. The, the target, the, the, the things that needed achieving with the headdresses was they need to be lightweight, they needed to obviously be animals, they were worn by children, they're being made by children as well. So they need to be very lightweight and very sort of malleable and easy to create, um, you know, these animals. And we've used this foam with push pins. It's really, really simple. And, and uh, you've been down to Grace Convent, how did the students respond? Yeah, we've had um, Grace Convent, they were sort of slightly older children, so they had a brilliant process where they got to draw animals and they made things out of pipe cleaners to understand the 3D um, form that they're creating. They made it in card and then they finally made the um, final headdresses. We've worked with younger 
kids as well, and they, they were sort of more on the design side. And then we've had Melbourne College, who I think are the children that are going to be performing. So they got to make some headdresses, not necessarily the ones that they're wearing, but they were part of the team of making these headdresses for their production. And again, people are busy behind you. What yeah. are they doing behind you? My beautiful, amazing um, team of makers, um, they are just making the 110 headdresses that were that are needed there's um they've copied uh, a lot of the ones that the students from gray's college made the the first ones obviously it's noah's ark so it's two by two so you need two animals um so they're sort of copying the designs from the students and then also designing and creating from scratch so how long has this process taken <coughs> um we've been doing it probably for about a month maybe um it's obviously increasing in the the work that's needed at the minute because we need to get it finished before Christmas. Which is not long. What do you enjoy about this? Because this is, you know, there's a conventional way of costumes being made, which is like a big yeah. work workshop yeah. um, near to where we are, or going to be where we are, but do you enjoy this? I love this. This is brilliant because um, the material that we're using is really quick to get an instant result. Um, some of these headdresses have been made in under an hour, um, and it's just lovely that people who initially think they're not skilled, I can't draw, I can't make, suddenly they've created an elephant or they've created a peacock and it's just the most brilliant feeling to feel you're part of something as well um, and to be able to see them on stage and being worn it's just going to be amazing so you